and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. It is called fake news, and we're told it's dangerous. Maybe we can agree on this. But let there be no mistake. It is governments and mainstream media that have peddled fake news for decades. And this is being challenged. To Crosstalk Fake News, I'm joined by my guest, Patrick Henningsen in Phoenix. He is a journalist, writer, and founder of the news website 21stCenturyWire.com. In Providence, we have Vladimir Goldstein. He is an associate professor of Slavic studies at Brown University. And in London, we cross to Marcus Papadopoulos. He is the editor of Politics First magazine. Okay, gentlemen, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Uh, Patrick, let me, you got up earliest for this program. I usually go to the person that got up earliest, and you got up very early. Let me go to you first here. Uh, it's really quite remarkable. Mainstream media is calling us out as fake news when they've been peddling it for decades and they've been caught repeatedly, particularly during the last American election cycle. Um, what gives here? I mean, again, I've used the term on this program before. We're living in parallel universes. Go ahead, Patrick. Sure. You know, what they've done here is they've tried to create a dialectic, basically, a binary conversation. So they come up with a, a list. Some academic has come up with a list saying these are all fake news websites, for instance. And then anything that's not on the list is presumed as real news. So essentially, this is a virtual book burning exercise uh, for the 21st century. Who's behind it? Uh, the biggest purveyors of actual fake news. Yep. I'm talking about the establishment corporate media. I'm talking about academia. And I'm talking about government itself. So anybody who's half intelligent can tell what a fake story is. My readers at 21st Century Art can tell what a fake story is. So how come her students at this university, yep. who, who she made this list, for this doctor can't tell. So is that a failure on my part or a failure of bloggers? No, this is a failure of the state. It's a failure of the, the education system, the dumbing down of America. So the solution they've offered is a nanny state solution where they put a committee together of the, uh, the same people who are really <laughs> responsible, uh, New York Times, Silicon Valley, people who are responsible for dumbing down the people in the first place. <laughs> this is like putting Bernie Madoff in charge of an ethical investment forum you know so they've lost control of the narrative they've lost control of the internet and so they want to attack the real diarists of the 21st century these are bloggers independent media people that hold no allegiance to corporations yeah. or power structures so this is you know the reaction of it is extraordinary uh, Marco if go to you in London I mean they've delegitimized themselves so much if we can look at brexit in the US election here now they want to turn around and delegitimize everybody else I mean I think this uh, dialectic is really in play right now. I mean, they were caught lying repeatedly and being deceptive. We can go all the way back um, uh, uh, to the illegal invasion of Iraq of 2003, and that's just one really good example. There are many, many, many more. And now they want to turn around and censor anyone that disagrees with them. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, what the West is saying about uh, Russian media is spiteful, is ludicrous, and is uh, unsurprising. You know, Peter, my premise about the West is that the West is not sincerely committed to freedom of speech, and anyone who argues to the contrary of that simply cannot uh, sustain that argument. But, you know, in my opinion, the Russian media has ruffled the feathers of the West, and that is a, uh, and that is a good thing. I think that the European Union as a whole, I think Britain, and America, regardless of political persuasions, understand that Russia has regained a lot of its Soviet-era influence and power and is now asserting its uh, national interests around the world and is challenging uh, the Western narrative. Now, that is frightening uh, Western policymakers and that is uh, frightening Western mainstream journalists. So, um, the, you know, the, the decision of the, uh, the European Parliament uh, yeah. to regard uh, Russian media as, uh, quote, dangerous um, is not surprising. But my own personal opinion is that I wouldn't take it as a negative. I actually think it's a positive oh, because I, it shows I that wear, we are exposing, we are, we are exposing their I double standards a, and we're exposing their folly. <laughs> I wear it as a, as a thorny crown. I, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And I say that very happily to our viewers right here. Vladimir, let me go to you because, you know, this is a roundabout way of censorship. If you do not agree with the standard narrative of the power
powers that be, you will be demonized. You cannot disagree. This is something that's relatively new. We used to have debates about topics. Now there can be no debate, and there can only be one legitimate source of information, and that's the government and its pliant media in the West. Go ahead, Vladimir. Yeah, the, uh, absolutely. The fact is that nobody knows or possesses the whole truth. That is, uh, so it's unbelievably presumptuous on the part of uh, mass media, who's been actually peddling a fair amount of their own, you know, lies, uh, misrepresentations, and so on. Now to suggest that they possess the truth and somebody else possesses only fake, fake, new, fake news. This is absolutely, uh, you know. Ridiculous. We have to go back to the very basic foundations of Western societies, the freedom of the speech, the fantastic text of uh, John Milton, Aeropagitica, yeah. where he insists on the fact that we have to read everything. We have to make our own conclusions. That, you know, the truth being, you know, torn apart, thrown around, and it's our task to put it together piece by piece. What Milton stresses is that what purifies us is trial, and trial is by what is contrary. So we have to read everything. I very frequently, you know, appalled by the nonsense which New York Times publishes, but nevertheless, once in a while, I find something interesting there. So this is the readers who have to find out, you know, and, and, and put truth together, rather than getting this kind of ridiculous interpretations, total demonization of Russia, total demonization of everything. And I would stress another thing. Thing, which I find totally appalling. You know, if you substitute, for example, just to make, make a mental exercise, if you substitute, you know, Russia this, Russia did this, Russia is dropping that, with the term Jews, it will be absolutely Nazi, yep. Goebbels-like propaganda, yep. which we already went through and, and, and been appalled by. And it, it continues. You know, just very recently, uh, economists did a cover of uh, Putin as a puppet, you know, puppeteer yeah. with his fingers, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, controlling everything, and you know, go to Ge Gebel's, you know, 1942, you know, uh, you know, that's exactly the same, the same cartoons where the Jews are controlling Stalin, yeah. and, and and they're the same, and then they have a goal, a nerve to call, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, people who challenge it or question it, you know, fake news. This is a clear case well, of you know, Freudian sleep. They've it's, been, it's, uh, you well, know, peddling obvious. fake news, and it's, now they're it's, uh, uh, it's obvious. That the powers that be in the West and the media don't have any historical memory. Shame on them. They're supposed to be uh, 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 pedagogical in their approach, but they're not, okay? And I want to talk about a slur. I want to go back to, to Patrick here. Alt-right, okay? This is all one big conspiracy. I don't know. I'm not going to insult our viewers here. On Facebook, on the Internet, I can spot a fake story a mile away, a mile away, okay? And they are out there. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're alt-right. They're there for clickbait for a number of other reasons, uh, sometimes just to, to cr uh, create uh, chaos, yes, uh, but the CIA has been doing that. There's a, a long record of the CIA getting itself involved in, in media, and again, the pliant media going along with it here. The, you know, uh, tarring the alt-right is wrong, because there is an alt-left then, okay, and they're in power. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, the, the term alt-right is itself is just a creation. It's a construct. You know, it's a label, and it means anything that its critics want to slap onto exactly. it. So, in terms of alt-right, that means misogynist, uh, neo-Nazi, white supremacist, whatever. The list is endless, right? So bef they've done this before with Tea Party, uh, with Truther. Uh, the term conspiracy theory is now equated with, or they've tried to equate it with extremist. Okay, so anything that is outside of the mainstream orthodoxy or anything that shows dissent against the establishment, that's been sort of tarred or labeled, and this is how they basically marginalize large sections of the population. So, you know, the rev they say the revolution will not be televised. It, it already happened, yeah. and they lost. The mainstream media, the, the establishment lost already. The, the revolution has happened. And so this is a, a knee-jerk uh, reaction against that, and to me, it, it, you know, we've crashed we've crashed through the gatekeepers gates yep. essentially and they meant to have the the wind of Hillary Clinton's uh, sales uh, you know filling the sales the wind of Hillary Clinton's victory was supposed to drive this this isn't just this wasn't just happening overnight this campaign you're seeing against so-called fake news has been in the works for a very long time incrementally and it meant to have some inertia and now they're throwing it all out before Donald Trump gets sworn in in January oh, yeah. along with a number of other things like attacks on RT as well uh, they're just they're emptying they're purging right now uh, and so it's kind of you know a, a, 
chaotic desperation uh, zone right now. Okay, l let me go back to London. Marcus, you know, we just heard the term conspiracy theory, but I would, I would make a strong argument, and I think a winning argument, is that Western audiences are a victim of a conspiracy of people in power in using the media <clears throat> to peddle their false narratives about the reality around us. And we can talk about the economy, we can talk about wars, we can talk about security, we can go on and on. It's a big package deal. Go ahead, Marcus, in London. Can I just quickly say, pick it up on the previous point, I don't think we should have anything to do with liberals or conservatives in America, neocons or neoliberals in America, because in my opinion, they are just as bad as each other. They put America first, regardless of the consequences sure, sure. Uh, for the rest of the world. But, you know, um, Peter, I distinctly and rividly uh, remember the 1990s um, when the West was demonizing the Serbs, when the West tore apart Yugoslavia, Yep. Uh, the wars in Croatia and Bosnia and then Kosovo. And, you know, Peter, there was no RT, there was no crosstalk at that time uh, to convey a different opinion, to challenge the Western narrative. There were no contributors uh, tackling why uh, American and British journalists, for example, were claiming half a million Albanians had been murdered yep. by the Serbs yep. uh, with no concrete evidence. Well, do you know something, Peter? That was then. This is today. And the world is a better place because yeah, of Russian but, and, media, and like RT, and like Sputnik, and like Crosstalk. They're terrified and of they're, it. That's why they attack at, us so much to try to delegitimize uh, well, us. And this is... But well, see, well ab absolutely. It, it, sh it, sh it shows that, for example, with, with yourself and Crosstalk, uh, that you are achieving splendid uh, progress because they are so viciously attacking you. If they weren't frightened of, uh, of Crosstalk, then they wouldn't, give a, they wouldn't give a reaction. But it's the fact they're frightened of you. It's the fact that you are exposing uh, the deceit, the recklessness, and the All folly right, keep it coming, of Western but foreign policy that run. they're doing this. We have to go to a short break, gentlemen. And after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on fake news. Stay with RT. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To mind you, we're discussing how traditional media is being challenged. Okay, let me go back to Vladimir in, uh, in Rhode Island. One, it's interesting, a few hours ago, uh, Donald Trump, uh, president-elect, he had a conversation with the editors of the New York Times. Um, I hope he gave it to him really, really rough, okay? I mean, the New York Times is absolutely a shameful publication right now. But if I'm not mistaken, on the same day Donald Trump uh, released through social media a video about his vision of the first 100 days of his presidency. What I found really interesting is not that he talked to the New York Times. I'm sorry he had to waste his time there. But what I think is interesting is that now he has found the means with the technology that we have right now to talk directly to the public. He doesn't need those filters anymore. He doesn't need the nonsense. He doesn't need the bias and the lies and the ideology that's all tied with it. All of these traditional newspapers and magazines and television are so disgraceful in their presentation right now. And it's only going to get worse. So Vladimir, now we can go away from them. You can go directly to the consumer, directly to the voter, okay? And I think that's a smart move because these elites, they hate democracy. They hate uh, uh, public participation and learning the truth about their reality around them. This is a new era. Go ahead, Vladimir. Yeah, they obviously had some kind of a monopoly on the news presentation, on the coverage. What Marcus referred to, total blockade about alternative views about, you know, uh, you know, b bombardment of Yugoslavia. That was the case. A lot of people try to, uh, you know, get, get it to the mass media. They would totally ignore it. And now I think what Trump is doing is basically trying to break up monopoly. It's like, you know, a trust busting of uh, his, you know, glorious predecessor, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, I think, and it's, eventually this trust busting did something very, you know, 
provide a good, good, good result because monopolies stifle everything, stifle the thought, stifle the progress, and, and you know, this mass media achieved this monopoly and now it's been uh, broken open both by, you know, alternative, you know, news, regular news, by, and now by president. And what is interesting, it was uh, Teddy Roosevelt who, in fact, encouraged what he called muckraking journalists because he knew yeah. that, you know, these monopolies are not going to give up that early, easily. So he was encouraging, you know, journalists, investigative journalists, muckraking journalists to expose all the nonsense which they are doing. Basically, they, they, they control the media, they push their private, you know, business interests, uh, pretending this is a government interest, government interest in Iraq, government there. It's not government interest. It's the interest of particular group of, uh, you know, uh, businesses or corporations which use another group of corporations to promote their own interests. But they try to tell it to American people that this is for their own interest. It's <laughs> not. You know, a lot of veterans are fighting these wars, come home, finding nothing but shut doors. They're committing suicide. They're doing, all, you know, they're suffering. And, you know, the, the, the media is silent about it. So yeah. Trump is very savvy politician. I hope he sort of, you know, he, he, know, he knows American well, history and he'll follow to okay. those glorious examples of trust busting. Okay, well, I, I think we could all agree with you that, but uh, Patrick, the, uh, the powers that be are not going to uh, take this sitting down. We all know it, okay? Uh, the offensive they're taking against us is only the beginning. It's going to get a lot more messy, really ugly. I'm certainly sure it's going to get personal, too. Um, and that, that what they have left, you know, you know, in a democratic society that f supports freedom of speech, censorship is the last resort. They're playing around with that now. Censorship, cutting people off like ourselves here. The Internet, we're not going to go away, okay? They can make trouble, but we're not going to go away. And it will again legitimize us and delegitimize their message. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, you know, this whole uh, fake news scare, you know, we've seen this, this isn't the first time it's happened. In 1938, Orson Welles did a broadcast yep. of War of the Worlds yep. on CBS radio. And the establishment at the time was the print news industry. And they over blew the uh, reaction to this broadcast by Orson Welles. And they said that there was pandemonium in the streets and it terrorized America. Because at the time, radio was the insurgent uh, communications platform, which was taking advertising dollars away from newspapers. So they used that fake news incident to demonize radio, much in the same way that uh, the establishment media is trying to demonize the uh, Internet uh, independent media today. So this, this hysterical reaction we're seeing is... Uh, the, the bubble that which they themselves have inflated has burst, basically. And so a handful of Facebook articles done by teenagers in Macedonia that somehow that tilted the U.S. election, <laughs> that idea is ludicrous. But I don't know, what, I don't know what's, what's more ludicrous, the actual fake news on Facebook or the reaction to it. But what's worse than fake news, Peter, what's worse than fake news is news that's omitted. Last week, 17 civilians reports in East Aleppo were slaughtered, gunned down by the moderate rebels right. who were trying to use them as human shields. They wanted to escape. That would, didn't get an inch of newsprint yeah. in U, any U.S. media outlet. Okay, so I have a list of endless list from Iraq to Libya to Syria. They've got every single major event wrong. The Ukraine, yeah. uh, the Iran Contra cocaine gate in the 80s, every single thing they've got wrong. And that has cost lives. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of innocent lives have been lost because of the New York Times, the Washington Post, and their collusion mm. with the deep state. Okay, they mm. are responsible. There's blood on their hands for Syria, for Libya, and for Iraq. Okay, so what is worse? I, I'll put the proposition that that is much worse than a handful of uh, silly articles on Facebook that they oh, had no absolutely. influence on the U.S. election absolutely. at all. Absolutely. This is, this is just a, a false flag. You know, Mark, Marcus, if I can go to you, is a, you know, but audiences are beginning to react here, and this is what spooked uh, uh, the traditional media and governments. I mean, governments are losing their mind over this. They can't control everybody anymore. And, uh, and I want to stress here, in all fairness, yes, there is fake news out there, but I, I, I my, t my sense is that it's not as damaging and, and uh, as large as uh, the, these uh, people that are uh, trying to scare us all. Um, and fake news has been around from time immemorial, okay? This is not their issue here. They're worried that audiences are going to move. And you know what? And it, 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 it's also a bottom line issue I mean, for revenues, okay? If people are going somewhere else, uh, they're not giving uh, money to these uh, traditional media outlets. Go ahead, Marcus, in London. Look, Peter, if I can just slightly come at this from a different uh, perspective, and I hear what everyone is saying, 
Regardless of what happens from January 2017 onwards, RT, Crosstalk and Russian media in general will continue uh, to carry out a powerful, powerful job in dissecting Western foreign policy and exposing it to be rotten to the core. But in regard to Mr Trump, we need to give him time. He hasn't even entered sure, the White House sure. yet. And I, I, would say, I would say that about any leader. But I do sense that there's this curious and misguided sense of optimism about him. Oh. Number one, he is, an, he, he is an unknown quantity. Yeah. Number two, he's not part of the political establishment, but he's part of the business establishment sure, in America. Sure. And if he genuine, if he's genuine about wanting to uh, fundamentally change American foreign policy, for example, towards Russia, and it's a big if, I believe, but he will come up against a formidable opposition yes, because indeed. that system in indeed. America, which I vigorously oppose, is absolutely entrenched. And I'll, I'll be candid with you, Peter, I don't believe it's possible for one person to change it. He will be up against Congress, a very right-wing Congress. His own party. He will be up against the his, CIA, his the own Pentagon, party. His, 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 own party. His, own, his own party, and the various lobby groups, for example, the war lobby. So while we need to give him time to see exactly what sort of president he's going to be, I don't believe um, that there is only, there's going to be any significant change in America. As, it, as the Iranian leader sent, uh, said recently, America remains the same America. Yeah, Marcus, you, you bring up a really good point, and I'm in agreement with you completely. If I can go to Vladimir, um, I want to make a very clear to our viewers here. If I, I see just continuity in American foreign policy under a Trump presidency, he's going to get my wrath in a nanosecond, okay? I'm not going to hold back, okay? Um, I'm glad Hillary Clinton will not be president of the United States. I'm over that now, okay? I'm over that. We have a new reality, but we have to keep an eye on, on, on our, the principles that we, you all have been on this program many times, the principles that I think we all adhere to. Go ahead, Vladimir. Yeah, I think what's what's important to stress uh, that you know we're in the current situation uh, when uh, Hillary Clinton lost and the whole machine which was backing her also lost. So what one would expect from any team side which lost is to come up with some kind of realization and a sort of improvement. But we don't see it. So whatever will happen after J January 17 is one thing. But what is disturbing is that they continue maligning Russia, maligning Trump, coming up with this, all these fake stories about alt-right, all this and that, as if nothing happened. And I find it's very disturbing because basically, you know, it's time to come Come up to terms with what's happened and th t time to, to turn gaze inward and analyze their own mistakes. You know, New York oh. Times should do that. You know, Washington <laughs> Post should do that. Never. CNN should do that. They but will instead, never they continue. Do it. They, they never. They continue with. Uh, <laughs> with no. the, they continue with the same offensive. And furthermore, the, the same applies to European press, even worse. They continue yeah. with the same stuff as if nothing happened, as if, you know, Americans' vote doesn't matter, if, you know, uh, the choice of American people does matter, rather than concentrating on new presidents, you know, congratulating them and trying to work on something and trying to see where, you know, Democratic Party went wrong or something. They continue with the same nonsense of maligning others and seeing nothing about themselves. That's absolutely right. I, you know, you really so wish that once in a while you know, they, need to, they need to pick up a mirror and look into it for just a few seconds and see the ugliness that they've created here. Patrick, you were on one of those lists. Your website was on one of those lists that are being fake news. Tell our viewers, how did you react to that when you saw that? Go ahead. Well, I, I woke up in the morning and people were saying that I was somehow a member of the alt-right uh, and that 21st century was on the fake news list. It, it, our readers took that as a badge of honor, uh, basically, and they said, fantastic, that means that you're really making a difference. But, you know, speaking of fake news, here's the New York Times. Uh, U.S. ties Russia to attack on U.N. aid convoy. This dominated the headlines. There's not a shred of evidence to back up that headline on the New York Times. Okay, that's just one example of many. So, you know, who are the real culprits of fake news? I think we need to look no further than CNN, uh, New York Times, New York Post, um, any of these mainstream media outlets, ABC, CBS, NBC. So, you know, the fact that they're attacking the little man uh, really speaks well, volumes. I'm, about, I'm really uh, proud you know, of you. All right, gentlemen, we've run out of time. We've run out of time for for real news here. Okay, many thanks to my guests from Providence, uh, Phoenix, and in London, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time, and remember, cross talk rules.
Yeah. Who, who she made this list for, this doctor, can't tell. So is that a failure on my part or a failure of bloggers? No, this is a failure of the state. It's a failure of the, the education system, the dumbing down of America. So the solution they've offered is a nanny state solution where they put a committee together of the, uh, the same people who are really <laughs> responsible, uh, New York Times, Silicon Valley, people who are responsible for dumbing down the people in the first place. <laughs> this is like putting Bernie Madoff in charge of an ethical investment forum, you know, so they've lost control of the narrative, they've lost control of the internet, and so they want to attack the real diarists of the 21st century. These are bloggers, independent media people that hold no allegiance to corporations yeah. or power structures. So this is, you know, the reaction of it is extraordinary. Uh, Marco, so I'm going to go to you in London. I mean, they've delegitimized themselves so much. If we can look at Brexit and the U.S. election here, now they want to turn around and delegitimize everybody. Well, mainstream media is calling us out as fake news when they've been peddling it for decades and they've been caught repeatedly, particularly during the last American election cycle. Um, what gives here? I mean, again, I've used the term on this program before. We're living in parallel universes. Go ahead, Patrick. Sure. You know, what they've done here is they've tried to create a dialectic, basically, a binary conversation. So they come up with a, a list. Some academic has come up with a list saying these are all fake news websites, for instance. And then anything that's not on the list is presumed as real news. So essentially, this is a virtual book burning exercise uh, for the 21st century. Who's behind it? Uh, the biggest purveyors of actual fake news. Yep. I'm talking about the establishment corporate media. I'm talking about academia. And I'm talking about government itself. So anybody who's half intelligent can tell what a fake story is. My readers at 21st Century Art can tell what a fake story is. So how come her students at this university? Else. I mean, I think this dialectic is really in play right now. I mean, they were caught lying repeatedly and being deceptive. We can go all the way back um, uh, uh, to the illegal invasion of Iraq of 2003, and that's just one really good example. There are many, many, many more. And now they want to turn around and censor anyone that disagrees with them. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, what the West is saying about uh, Russian media is spiteful, is ludicrous, and is uh, unsurprising. You know, Peter, my premise about the West is that the West is not sincerely committed to freedom of speech, and anyone who argues to the contrary of that simply cannot uh, sustain that argument. But, you know, in my opinion, the Russian media has ruffled the feathers of the West, and that is a, uh, and that is a good thing. I think that the European Union as a whole, I think Britain, and America, regardless of political persuasions, understand that Russia has regained a lot of its Soviet-era influence and power. And Welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. It is called fake news, and we're told it's dangerous. Maybe we can agree on this. But let there be no mistake. It is governments and mainstream media that have peddled fake news for decades. And this is being challenged. To Crosstalk Fake News, I'm joined by my guest, Patrick Henningsen in Phoenix. He is a journalist, writer, and founder of the news website 21stCenturyWire.com. In Providence, we have Vladimir Goldstein. He is an associate professor of Slavic studies at Brown University. And in London, we cross to Marcus Papadopoulos. He is the editor of Politics First magazine. Okay, gentlemen, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Uh, Patrick, let me, you got up earliest for this program. I usually go to the person that got up earliest, and you got up very early. Let me go to you first here. Uh, it's really quite remarkable. It's now asserting its uh, national interests around the world and is challenging uh, the Western narrative. Now, that is frightening uh, Western policymakers and that is uh, frightening Western mainstream journalists. So, um, the, you know, the, the decision of the, uh, the European Parliament uh, yeah. to regard uh, Russian media as, uh, quote, dangerous 
Um, it's not surprising, but my own personal opinion is that I wouldn't take it as a negative. I actually think it's a positive oh, because I, it shows I that wear, we are exposing, I, we, are, we are exposing their I double standards a, and we're uh, exposing their folly. I wear it as a, as a thorny crown, I, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And I say that very happily to our viewers right here. Vladimir, let me go to you because, you know, this is a roundabout way of censorship. If you do not agree with the standard narrative of the power Powers that be, you will be demonized. You cannot disagree. This is something that's relative.